Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I have the Gnomes for Winter collection on my desk today and I'm going to be working on my Alaska album. The blues and greens and browns in this paper and wintry feel is perfect for outdoor adventure layouts as well as winter layouts. Love the word paper there. But this stripe paper brings in all the colors and this is a full 12 by 12. I just trimmed into this one already. And then we have these icon papers. This one has like the little winter icon sleds and little teapots and winter beanies. This side, which is the back side of it, has the gnomes, so slightly different, and you can use one side or the other. This is the sticker sheet here. It definitely has a little bit more of a winter feel to it, so I don't know how many stickers I will be using on today's layout, but let's go ahead and clear this out of the way, and we will get started. I do have some scraps also, so I might be working with some of those before I cut into these papers. This is going to be a double page layout, so I have both of my verse mats, and then we are building this layout on a sheet of white daisy for my background. So I'm scrapbooking some glacier photos, so the white and blue definitely plays into the photos quite nicely. We were on a boat tour, it's like a glacier and wildlife tour out of Kenai, and we went to this uh, Holgate Glacier where we stopped and they let us watch the glacier calving into the ocean for a bit. It was really cool and beautiful, and uh, these are just some snapshots of us watching the you know big chunks of ice sloughing off into the ocean. I want my main focal photos on the left hand side and then I have this picture of my husband looking in so I'm going to put him on the outside edge so he's looking into the frame. These two are true four by sixes. I'm going to put the glacier up top because it's almost like we're looking at it out in the distance there. This was a 10 by 10 piece I had gutted from the center of a previous layout so I cut that in half to stretch it across. I think it's 10. Yes, it is 10. So these are now each 10 by 5 inches. So I could span that across both sides of the layout. Let me set these aside here. I want to bring in this stripe pattern paper to introduce the browns. So that is also 10 inches by 2 inches. Now I had some scraps, but the fun thing about striped paper, super easy to line up and no one will ever know that that is not one solid piece. This is Periwinkle cardstock, which is a coordinating color. And to add some character to this, I grabbed my Snowflake Slimline Embossing Folder. Embossing folders are great for scrapbook layouts to add texture and patterns to your cardstock. So this is a little bit longer. That's okay. We'll have to go in two passes. So I'm going to run that through my die cutting machine. And now we can flip this around. There will be a little bit of a line, but it's okay. You're not going to notice it. So I I will emboss this second portion here. Because this cardstock has the white core, I can sand it to bring out the, the snowflakes will be a little bit whiter. There'll be more of a contrast and you'll be able to appreciate that detail a little bit better. I'll sand the edges also. Uh, I already created one off camera and dovetailed the ends. So I'm lining them up together so the dovetails will be the exact same. You just cut up from the center and then each corner. These two periwinkle strips are 11 and 3 quarters by 3 and 1 quarter. And I am going to cover up the center here and connect my pattern papers together. So this is going to be my base. And it was kind of dictated by the, you know, plaid paper up top. I had those that 10 by 10 piece, divided it in half, and then the rest of the layout kind of came together. So I do want to finish off the edges. I'm using the espresso ink because that is the brown that's in this paper. And I'm going to be bringing in some espresso for my embellishment clusters too. So I'll just do a little bit on camera here and then I'll get the rest of it uh, done off camera so you don't have to watch the whole process. Let's bring the photos back in and see how everything is uh, working out on our paper here. So I want to slide those down so I have more up top. And then for these, let's bump this one down so it's on the same level as the one on the right hand page. Now I have a couple zip strips. This is a darker sapphire blue. This is the branding strips off of some of the Gnomes for Winter paper. And I feel like this is a nice kind of anchor for everything to sit on. Since I printed these with the white border, I'm actually going to slide that down and just keep them connected so I have a little bit more room above and below. I'm going to trim up the edge of my little zip strip here. So I'm just holding that up so my angles match. 
And then I want to bring in more of the espresso brown. So I cut a photo mat here. Actually, let's just go ahead and tape that into place because I do like the way that looks. I couldn't really come up with anything clever for a title, so I turned to my Cricut and cut out the word Holgate Glacier. And the background is, or the outline is sapphire blue, and the words are from White Daisy. I thought it'd be fun to have the darker outline for a change, but this is looking small. It's just kind of, it's okay, but I did cut a larger title as well, and let's see how that one looks. I think this is going to be better. Sometimes you just need it to be a little bit larger scale just to make more of an impact and catch your eye. So we'll put Holgate there and then Glacier here. And I like that. I think we're ready for embellishments now. I turn to my stamp collection. This is the Evergreen Scrapbooking Stamp. It was a Christmas collection. And there's a card making one as well with a little cluster of trees that are slightly smaller. So the other ones I already had stamped and cut. So let's just make a couple of these. Both pine and jade are green colors in this collection, but since the other trees are stamped in pine, I think I will do these in the same color scheme as well. And it's just such a great color for pine trees. It's appropriately named, <laughs> so this is my go-to. And that looks pretty good. I'll do another one and get those both die cut off camera here. I want to make a little cluster over on the left hand side so let's slide this row of trees underneath the periwinkle strip and then I'll repeat that all the way over on the right hand side to draw your eye over. So let me tuck, tape this down. I know I want my photos here so I might as well tack these into place. I don't need to dry fit these. I've already decided and if you need to scoot embell embellishments underneath it's easy enough to pry that up. So I also want some greenery up top here to create that visual triangle. We could put these taller trees in the lower corner here. I want to bring the espresso over to this side of the layout. So I cut a circle. You see me all the time using circles to kind of ground my embellishments. These trees kind of cover too much of that. So I'm going to switch these and use the smaller trees up top here. And then let me tuck this little guy in and we can move these back down to this lower corner here. When building embellishment clusters, one of my go-to strategies is to place elements both behind the photos and on top. So I grab this sticker, it says frozen in time. I also grab some acrylic snowflakes, but this is going to sit over the top of those trees and kind of connect everything together. I dug through my animal themed stamp sets and found this oldie, it's called On Safari, and there's a polar bear on here. Now we didn't see any polar bears, but I feel like it's a great opportunity to use this stamp set. Alaska is known for their bears. There are polar bears in Alaska, so it works for me. Plus, embellishments don't always have to be literal. I have stamped them on white daisy paper and used my ice gray spectrum noir tri-blend marker to add a little shading, but I want to kind of anchor him on something. So I've grabbed this little chipboard arrow. We could use this just to kind of ground the bear and that works. I have a whole pile of arrows I'm thinking about adding. This stamp set's called Seize the Day, and it has this compass on here. So I didn't have a lot of embellishments, you know, planned out for a glacier layout. So I thought, well, we're on the ocean and we were seeing wildlife. So I dug through my ocean stamps, my wildlife stamps, and then, of course, Alaska's very forested. So I went through my outdoor adventure stamps and I was able to find lots of different things to embellish this layout to kind of help tell the story. I've stamped that in espresso brown and I'll go ahead and get that die cut out. Now this is a retired stamp. Maybe you have it in your stash or perhaps it will remind you of something you have that is similar. So I went ahead and die cut that out and I also stamped and die cut a few other images. I think I'll put my little compass up here. These other images are from the Aurora scrapbooking stamp and I love this one. A uh, couple different options. This oval says outdoor expedition, dare to discover. I stamped and fussy cut the tree to have a two-tone look. Now I mentioned I like to have something over the photo. So I want something connecting these three photos in the corner here. I don't know. That one's not quite right. Maybe the difference in the trees or maybe just too many trees. Let's try this one here. This one is kind of perfect. It says adventure outside and it has tiny little trees and then mountains in the background. I do like that. I think that's the winning combination. But let's try one of these taller pine trees. Tuck that one there. We'll bring this one up a little taller. And yes, love it. 
I also dug through my embellishment binder and found this cute little faux wood grain camera. And I thought that might be perfect because it was like a photo spot, right? And that also does the trick of grounding the bear. We could put the arrow over on this side just to use it. But looking at this, I feel like that camera needs to be darker. So what's fun about these embellishments is you can change them up. You can color them with ink to match your layout. So I've got a little bit of the espresso brown ink here and I'm just uh, darkening the edges and we'll see how that looks. Looks. Cameras 99.9% .9 of the time are going to work as an embellishment on your layout, but this was perfect because it was a photo spot. We stopped, they fished a chunk of the ice out of the ocean and passed it around. My uh, friend's husband, Treger, on the right hand side is holding the ice block and they took our photos with the glacier in the background, which was really cool. I'm, I'm glad to have this group photo. I didn't feel like having the edges darkened was enough, so I'm adding ink to the entire image, and that does look a lot better. I want to add more to the compass up top, so this sticker says, just chillin'. Whoops, I thought I had that glued down. Uh, sometimes I dry fit things, and then I get carried away and realize it's not adhered, so I better stop and do that. And we're gonna slide this tag because my little Just Chillin' was blending into the background. So we've got the tag, we'll overlap the compass, and I think that looks pretty cute. These little acrylic snowflakes were from this. They came out with the Gnomes for Winter Collection, I'm pretty sure. And I'm strategically placing them on darker backgrounds so that they pop a little bit better. As I mentioned, we were on a boat tour out of Kenai for most of the day, and we saw lots of wildlife. So what I decided to do is separate the story of the glacier experience into this layout, and the wildlife uh, pictures will be on a different layout because there was just no way to combine them all into one event, and they're kind of two different stories, although it was the same tour. For my journaling, I typed this out onto vellum. Now this is the scrapbook.com brand vellum and I really like it. It pr printed beautifully, minimal bleeding, it's nice and clear, and this is a heavy weight vellum. It's much thicker than the Close to My Heart vellum that I have on hand. So once I use up all of mine, I will definitely be purchasing some of this. So what I'm gonna do is I adhere the vellum underneath the photos there where you can't see it and we'll line it up with that three by four photo. My sister-in-law was actually here crafting with me and she had the vellum so I was able to try it which is always a nice way to you know test out different products. I'm adding one little tree on foam tape, kind of overlapping the photo in this lower right hand corner. And I also put foam tape behind this sentiment that says frozen in time. You may or may not have noticed I've not been as active in the comment section of my videos lately and please know that I appreciate you taking the time to leave those comments. It means so much to me and I'm very grateful. Ever since Close to My Heart made the announcement at the end of February that they are closing, things have been absolutely crazy and quite honestly I am having a very hard time keeping up right now but that's okay it won't last forever and uh, things will settle down but just know that uh, I do appreciate you taking the time to leave those comments. Let me hold this up for you so you can see some of those embellishment details. I did adhere the acrylic snowflakes with miniature glue dots, the micro glue dots. Those are my favorite way to attach the acrylic shapes. And yeah, I'm really happy with this, how this turned out. We got another one in the Alaska album, which feels amazing. I will have some still shots up over on my Pinterest, Instagram, and Facebook accounts. You can check those out there. And if you're looking for more outdoor adventure layouts and check out these videos, Videos right here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon here on YouTube. Bye!